So, you've heard that the beat is something that is not only a part of the music, but is actually the framework, or the structure, or the skeleton that the music is built upon. The beat's regularity tells us where we are in the music, what the music feels like, and where it wants to go, whether it wants to march, skip, sway, or gallop. There are actually lots of things that depend on a regular beat or a steady rhythm. The first one I'm sure you can think of is the steady drum of your heartbeat. But can you think of any others? For example, what would happen if a clock didn't have a steady rhythm? Or have you ever tried to jump rope without a steady rhythm? A steady beat is so important, not just for us, but also for plants and animals and nature. One important steady rhythm is the cycle of the sun, rising every morning and setting every night. This steady rhythm helps plants know when it's time to grow and birds know when it's time to migrate. In Hood Canal, one of the most important rhythms is the steady beat of the tide. Teaching naturalist Lucas Marin from the Hood Canal Salmon Center is here to talk to you a little more about how tides keep the beat for life in the canal. Hello everyone, my name is Lucas and I work at the Salmon Center. We work all around Hood Canal to improve habitats for salmon populations, research salmon populations, and teach folks about salmon in Hood Canal. One important part of my job is teaching students just like you about all the cool things you can find in the Puget Sound. Today we're going to talk about tides and how they act as the beat of the Hood Canal. Here we have semi-diurnal tides which means the Hood Canal has two nearly equal high and low tides every day. For example, if I stayed at this beach for 24 hours, I would see this low tide right now, and another high tide in six hours, then another low tide in 12 hours, and then the last high tide in 18 hours. Many creatures listen to the beat of the tides and follow along based on their needs. Oysters are one that I think are really interesting they rely on the consistency of tides to stay alive. Since they spend their whole lives stuck to the same rock or laying on the same section of beach, they remember the changing of tides and moving them even just a few feet up or down the beach can ruin their health because it changes the amount of time that they get water or the amount of time spent before they're gonna get their next flush of water and nutrients. There's a few other animals that rely on tides in the Hood Canal. Birds like gulls and sandpipers use them and use the low tides to look for food. Um, just like raccoons and coyotes. These ones always come to mind because I've seen raccoons and coyotes very often at low tides scavenging beaches and tide pools. They know that this is an easy way to get food so they return to those areas daily for a quick snack when all the goodies are exposed. And let me tell you, those coyotes and raccoons I've seen are definitely healthy. Tides also act differently in the Hood Canal than other bodies of water. Because the canal is so long and skinny, and is actually the only fjord in the lower 48 states, the changing of tides can force it to act more like a large river than the rest of the Puget Sound. As the tides go up, fresh water gets pushed into the canal, so there's about six hours of current in one direction, and then as the tide goes back down, the water gets flushed back out to sea, so there's about six hours of current in the opposite direction. This exchange is important to keep the water circulating and clean throughout the canal. Fish even follow these currents, and it can dictate how they move around the salt water after food. Barnacle, barnacles are another cool sea creature that depend on tides to bring them food and water. They stick to rocks just like oysters, but my favorite barnacle fact is that these guys can actually survive out of water without a high tide that's high enough to give them water for up to 28 days. That's pretty crazy. If you want to know more about tides, the best way to find out is just experience them on your own. So get out to a beach or some tide pools near you and start looking around. Thanks, have a good day.